Well, good morning, dear ones. It's uh, August the 2nd, if you're picking this up, we're recording it at home before we go to church so that uh, you guys can pick this up on the internet. Our church recordings are having quite a bit of background noise and, and it's kind of hard to sort it all out. We're trying to do something that's got better sound quality. Um, tried to record this in the backyard for you with the waterfall and everything, but uh, there's just so much background noise once again just not good quality. So uh, if you are here in the Cheyenne area and you are sheltering in place due to COVID, we are continuing to pray for you. I pray that this is a blessing to you. When you do feel safe, we would love to have you in fellowship with us. Right now we're meeting at uh, 2111 uh, First Avenue here in Cheyenne, the South Cheyenne, just off of college at uh, Waterside, and I, I, I would really love to have you, but we do not want to put you at risk. If you're catching this on the internet and are away from uh, Cheyenne, we pray it's a blessing for you and that you're nourished in it. Today's service is going to be a little bit different because uh, we are going to be speaking about prayer. I'm taking a bit of a, of a step away from uh, teaching. We should be in Acts chapter 7. But this is something the Lord has laid on our hearts. We're going to have a fellowship here today after uh, the regular service, after worship service, and uh, wanted to spend some time in prayer together. One of the things that I find in the church today is there is an anemia, uh, both for the knowledge of the word, the teaching of the word, if you would, and for prayer. Now, in Calvary chapels, we're very good about teaching the word. But I think sometimes we kind of fall short in the area of prayer, especially on Sunday services, because we've got so much to do. But since we only are meeting about once a week now, unless we're in a home fellowship, we're really not spending a lot of time in prayer. You're welcome to come on Sunday evenings. Uh, we do have a prayer time. Uh, it's at a home right now, but if you want to get a hold of me at the number on the internet uh, at calvarysouth.org, down at the bottom of the page, there is our contact information. You can contact me, and I will get you an address for uh, that prayer time. With that in mind, I want to pray, and then uh, we're going to be in and out of prayer this morning. So I, I pray this is a, just a huge blessing for you as we look at prayer in the life of a believer. So uh, with that, let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to spend time with your saints this morning. Lord, we are so blessed to have the uh, ability to be able to come before the creator of heaven and earth and to pray. And so, Lord, we pray uh, right now that you would help us to use this time wisely to understand what we are doing in our lives as we practice your presence. And that, Lord, in that, our lives would literally change as we pray through your word. We love you and we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, and the family of God said, Amen. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take this shirt off. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'll just leave it on. I thought about that for a second. Uh, I've been outside and a little warmer here in the house, but we'll work through it. Uh, I, I titled today, "If I Had Only Considered." If I had only considered. An anonymous person once said. If you only pray when you're in trouble, you're in trouble. And another one says, don't forget to pray today, once again from Anonymous, because God did not forget to wake you up this morning. What a blessing we have in each day, even though we may be going through struggles. You know, Joseph spent two years in jail, and yet he served and he ministered. And it was there that he was noticed, and God set everything in order for him to preserve the nation of Israel while they were in Egypt. I think that that's so important that we see, no matter where we are, we can serve the Lord, and we can praise the Lord, and we can pray to the Lord. Charles Stanley said, of all the things Christ wants for us, loving him and focusing our attention on him are the most important. And prayer and praise are just such a great way to do that. Certainly in the study of the word, too, but prayer and praise. Max Lucado, another godly man, says, Our prayers may be awkward, 
our attempts may be feeble, but since the power of prayer is in the one who hears it and not the one who says it, our prayers do make a difference. I really like that. It's in the power of the one who hears it, not in our power. Our feeble prayers can bring down, bring down powerful ministry if we will just seek him. Corey Tinboom said, is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? You know, you'll ask people how it's going. Well, it's, it's, it's not going that great. It's all up to prayer now. And why do we wait till then to pray? Are we hauling prayer out of the back of the car because everything else has gone flat? Saints, we need to be constantly in prayer. Ian Bounds, one of the mighty men of God, and I'm going to be quoting him a few times today, uh, openly says, Every mighty move of the Spirit of God has its source in the prayer chamber. Every mighty move of God have its source in the prayer chamber. Abraham Lincoln said this, I know that the Lord is always on my side, on the side of the right, but it is my constant anxiety and prayer that I and this nation may be on the Lord's side. I think that prayer is important for that, that we would align ourselves with the will of God. So many times when we pray, we do not pray effectively because we're trying to bring God around to our way. He's the creator of heaven and earth. It's his way. What we need to do is to see things his way. Once again, Ian Bounds says, Prayer is the one prime eternal condition by which the Father is pledged to put the Son in possession of the world. Christ prays through his people. I'm going to say that again. This is the imbalance. Christ prays through his people. Wow. Now in the word of God, it says in Ephesians, pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So not simply praying about ourselves, but praying in the greater picture of the Lord's economy. Praying for those beyond our common reach. Where we cannot reach physically, we can reach in prayer. Once again, Ian Bounds. It is only when the whole heart is gripped with the passion of prayer that life-giving fire descends for none but the earnest man gets access to the ear of God. James tells us that the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. In Psalm 5.1, it says, Give ears to my words, O Lord, and consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for to you will I pray. My voice you shall hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. Martin Luther says, To be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without creed without breathing. I've said before, and, and you've heard before, it is many times that the apostles were very, very close to Jesus. He, he, walked, he walked with them for three years, three and a half years. And yet they only asked him to teach them one thing. They didn't ask him to teach them how to heal people or how to walk on water or the miracles that they saw. They saw that those miracles transpired because, number one, he was the Son of God, and number two, in his man, he was a man of prayer. He sought the Lord in prayer. And so uh, the apostles asked him, would you teach us to pray? And in the Sermon on the Mount and also in the book of Luke, we see this prayer set forth, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. In this manner, therefore, pray. And what I want to share with you is this is a prayer that can become rhetorical if we simply pray it through. We've heard it at the close of many, many uh, Christian services. We've heard it at the beginning of many Christian services. But how often do we learn to use this, as the Lord intended, I believe, as a pattern for our own personal prayer? Our Father 
in heaven. That's who we're praying to. We're praying to the creator of heaven and earth. One of the things that we find many times, we'll talk to people who may not have a close walk with God or may not have a walk with God at all, and yet you find that they're praying. And you say, well, who are you praying to? And they say, well, we're praying to God. And then you begin to uh, have a conversation with them. And in that, uh, as they relate to you who God is in their lives, what it is that they've made up a God on their terms. This is not the God that created heaven and earth and the things that are in. It is not the God that caused Moses to, to bring the nation of Israel out of bondage. It's not the God that through his son would redeem the world from sin or that his son, while he walked among men, could also walk on water. Their God is made up in their image. It's what they want. And their God is not, it's a, it's a homemade God. And it cannot, that God, small g, their God that they've made up, the work of a man's hands or a man's mind, cannot deliver for it is no God at all. But the God of the Bible, the God that we're to pray to, we need to constantly be in reminder of who it is we're praying to. It says, hallowed be your name. That means that for me, I need to bring God to that place that I understand he is worthy of the reverence that I want to bestow by his grace. We pray your kingdom come. In the world around us today, Many times when people pray, it is my kingdom come, my will be done. But to pray, his will be done. Lord, what, what, what is it that you would have us to do? When Paul was converted, his first question was, Lord, what would you have me to do? And he is used so mightily by God. And I'm wondering today if we could come to the place where we would say, what would you have me to do? Your will be done on earth, here, while we walk among men. Lord, we, we pray that your will would be done. You know, we're, in, we're, we're living in a world right now where we're being isolated, where our economy is being turned upside down, where many of us have lost our jobs. Some people are struggling with their health, extreme health issues with this COVID-19, all these different things. And, and we come back to this, uh, of your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, we pray that you would supply for us what we need. That, that bread, and notice it didn't say beyond the daily bread. Why? Because like the manna that was given when the people were in the wilderness, they went out and collected it, collected it daily. That kept them constantly in mind of the fact that that provision came from the Lord's hand. So many times today we take stock in what we've laid aside for a great amount of time in the future. And yet we know now that that could be gone in a moment, in the blink of an eye, today in the stroke of a keypad. We could go from prince to pauper in a moment. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our debts as we forgive those who are our debtors, or forgive our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lord shows us that we're not to bear um, a grudge, that we're to keep a short tally, both with the Lord and with our fellow man. No, don't carry a grudge. It leads to bitterness, which separates us from God. And so we don't want to do that. This is prayer that effectively changes not only our lives, but the people around us because our lives have changed and we reflect the Lord's glory. And uh, it is interesting, it says, do not lead us into temptation. In the Greek, it says, do not allow us to enter into temptation. And really that kind of lines up better than what we see in the King James and the New King James and other translations today. I do not pray, this is John chapter 17, verse 15, I do not pray that you should keep them from the evil one. But that you should, uh, I'm sorry, let me reread this. John 17, 15. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. 
That was jo Jesus praying in, in the garden uh, on the night that he was betrayed. And of course, hear back in the Lord's Prayer, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So as we leave that prayer, once again reminding ourselves that we are leaving it in the Lord's hand, which is where we should. We, we, so many times we pray about something, we lay it at the Lord's feet, and then we pick it back up again and carry it around with us. That's not what Jesus said to do. He said, come to me, if you're bearing a burden, take my yoke and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly of heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. Leave your burden at the cross. Leave your burden in prayer. Martin Luther, as I've already said, was this man who was such a powerful man of prayer. And he prayed through three different patterns of prayer. And I know that he prayed a lot more than that. And we have a lot of prayer in the Bible. For instance, uh, many years ago, we had this prayer of Jabez that was going around and people were praying it rhetorically like it was some kind of a mantra, like it would, uh, it would bring them good luck. Prayer is not meant to bring you good luck. It is to bring you a great spirit, spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. That is done through prayer, saints, through worship, through the study of the word, through the fellowship of the saints. But today in this prayer, as we're looking at this, understand this is never to be done rhetorically, but relationally, so that we have that closer walk with the Lord. So another place that, that Luther prayed is he would pray through the Ten Commandments. So he'd pray through the Lord's Prayer, and then he'd pray through the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, and he, the first one is that thou shalt have no other God. So the, the question we have to ask ourselves is have we, have we allowed God to, um, to take place in our lives have we had other gods? Have we put other things above God? It says to make no graven image. And in the Old Testament, the prophets would say that a man would take a piece of wood that he would use a bit to warm his home, a bit to cook his bread, and set up the remainder to worship. And saints, we have to be so very careful that we're not involved in that kind of a thing, but we do it. Because wherever we spend our time and we spend our money, that's our God. And so many of us have wrapped ourselves up. We identify with what we own. We're owned by what we own. Do not take the name of the Lord in vain. And I've related this before, but so many people have simply said that that's speaking profanity. But let's break that down a little bit. What is it to be a profane person? It is a person who's uh, profess the Lord Christ, and yet lives as though they were not espoused as a bride. They drag the Lord's name through the mud. And so that is what it means to take the name of the Lord in vain. If you're a Christian, if you're a, a follower of Christ, then we're to be those people who uh, show that in the lives that we live, that we're faithful to the Lord, that we're faithful to our family, that we're faithful to our friends. Jesus said, let your yes be yes, and your no be no, let nothing come between the two. It says that we're to remember or to honor the Sabbath. Now, this is the one commandment that the Lord didn't really speak of in the New Testament. But Paul says, one man esteems one day above another, another man esteems each day the same. Let each man so do as he is established in his heart, but do it as unto the Lord. So many times today, we as a society have set up Sunday or a, a Sabbath day as a day for beer, baseball, brats, and baloney. We're, we're involved in things uh, where there's no rest. And so uh, it tells us we're, we're to honor our father and mother. Well, for many of us who are well-seasoned in years, does that relieve us of that command? No, not at all. Because we still have people who lead us in the faith, and we're to honor them, both uh, ladies that, that lead us in the faith, mothers, if you would, in our faith, 
and uh, like Paul, whenever he's talking about Alexander and Rufus and about their mother, who's a mother to him also. And of course, we're to honor the men in our lives who are leaders in the faith. And it tells us, do not murder. And Jesus says, if we have that kind of anger and bitterness in our heart, we're guilty of it. So we need to set that aside. Do not commit adultery. Jesus says, don't look at a person that way. Don't look at that person, whether it's a man or a woman, however you want to do it. Don't go down that road. Because it tears you away from your true love, which is the Lord our God. You know, an unmarried, unmarried person to say, well, I'm, I'm not married. Yeah, but we still commit spiritual adultery whenever we turn and long after something that is not of the Lord. Do not steal. Real simple. I mean, if we see that, we, we have to uh, not take something. It's, it's to look at longingly, but to take that action to possess it when we haven't earned it. It says, do not bear false witness. The, another one says, do not, do not lie. But in truth, what it means is you can speak the truth, but do it in a bad way. And we don't want to do that. We want to, don't want to bear false witness. Remember that Jesus, they brought up that he said, tear this temple down and I will, I will rebuild it in, in three days. And he was speaking of his body. We know that. We have the scripture to show us that. But whenever they come to his trial, they bore a false witness. What they said was true. He had actually said that. But the, the way they related it, took away from the testimony and the truth of what he said. So we have to be careful about how we speak. And finally, do not covet. That is to, to desire in such a strong way that we cannot have a way to attain it to ourselves. And it, it says, uh, don't covet uh, anything that is of your neighbors, whether it's his family, uh, his possessions, his livestock. Uh, we're not to possess any of it. And then the final thing that, that Luther prayed through was the Apostles' Creed. And saints, I, I think it's a great place to begin prayer. And let's just walk down through it. It says, I believe in God. Do you? Do you believe in God? The Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. That's a good place, isn't it? And it relates back to what we saw in the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. Only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. There are many churches today that will not openly confess that. They have abandoned the Apostles' Creed. Saints, listen to me very closely. Though they may have abandoned the Apostles' Creed, as we pray this through, we not only accept it, acknowledge it, but we make it part of our fiber in our life of faith in Christ Jesus, our Lord. He suffered under, under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified. He died, and he was buried. Once again, these are critical things that we see in our faith. Do we pray this through? Lord, I thank you that you did suffer, that they accused you wrongly, that you were crucified on the cross, that you died, and that you were buried in the tomb. That you descended to the dead, that you went down and set the captives free. And on the third day you rose again, and you ascended into heaven. You walked among men for 40 days, Lord, and allowed them to see you. You ate with them, you prayed with them, you continued to minister to them, and then you were taken up, and that you're seated at the right hand of the Father, and that you will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. This is a great thing to pray. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the universal church, the church of Christ, not the denomination, not a Catholic, which means universal, by the way, not uh, Protestant, but the Church of Christ. No denomination of Christ. We're not of Apollos. We're not of, of, 
uh, any great teacher except the finest teacher that ever walked among men, the Son of God. We believe in the forgiveness of sins. Lord, thank you that you've forgiven my sins. We believe in the resurrection of the body. We thank you that, Lord, you're going to give us a glorified body and the everlasting life. And it is interesting that the Apostles' Creed ends with amen. You see, the Apostles' Creed wasn't simply a declaration. It was a prayer with a proclamation. And so, once again, as we go down through these, I just want to take a moment and encourage you as we, we would pray through these things this morning. And then I want to wrap this up. So, uh, if you would, and I said that we'd spend some time in prayer this morning. Now, I've talked too long. Uh, you've probably heard these things explained before. If you haven't, I pray this is very refreshing to you. But now, if you would, if you would able to quiet yourself for a minute, quiet your surroundings, simply bow your head and pray along with me. And, and once again, this is a pattern for prayer. Do not pray this rhetorically, saints. Pray it uh, applicationally. To, you know, as I pray this through this morning, we're going to have time constraints. But this is something you can set before the Lord on any given day, and you will be amazed. If you just set the clock away, and, and set yourself in a quiet place, you'll be amazed as you pray through these things. Memorize them. Make them part of your daily life. And you will be so very blessed. Now, there are prayers throughout the Word of God from Genesis all the way to Revelation. And when you are reading through the Word of God and you see these prayers, figure out a way to make them part of your conversation with the Lord. But with that in mind, I want to go on and we're going to we're going to pray through these even right now. So let's do that. Lord, we thank you that you are our Father in heaven and that you are holy. Your name is holy. Lord, we, we don't even know this side of glory what that name entails. But Lord, we want to sanctify you right now. Uh, your kingdom, Lord, we pray that your kingdom would come. Lord, not only uh, uh, that which is to come, but Lord, that your will would be done even today, your kingdom here among men. We pray, Lord, that it would be on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, in heaven, there is no sin. And we pray for that. And Lord, even in our lives right now, we're constantly given over to sin, even though we don't want to be. But Lord, we pray that here on earth, your will would be done. And we pray for the day when that would take place, Lord. We thank you for it. Lord, we pray for our provision today. We pray that we would not uh, want next year's provision or a lifetime of provision, Lord. Do not give us so much that we forget about who you are and we think that we're all in, a, in and of ourselves. Lord, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lord, help us, help me, Lord, to be quick to keep a short list when it comes to sin. Help me, Lord, for the people who I feel have hurt me. Lord, and there's no way they could have hurt me more than they hurt you. And Lord, I also pray that, um, that as I forgive those sins, Lord, I would be forgiven. And Lord, I pray that you would do not, not allow us to enter t into temptation, but that you would deliver us from the evil one. Lord, I pray that you keep Satan out of our lives. Help us to fill our lives with you to the point where there's no room for him, for his darkness, for his lies. Strengthen us, Lord, in the promises of your word. And Lord, it is your kingdom and it is your power. And we pray this for your glory. Lord, your word tells us that we're to have no other God. And Lord, there have been so many times in my life where I have placed my little gods above you. Lord, the gods of pleasure, the, the gods of desire, the gods of self-worth, um, 
just so many things, Lord. And so right now, Lord, I just pray that you'd show me when I have had other gods and help me, Lord, to be able to set those things aside. Lord, I pray that my hands would not be involved in things that I would become worshipful about, no matter what it is, no matter. Lord, I, as I build things, I sometimes establish my worth in what I've accomplished or I think I've accomplished. Lord, I can't do anything without you. Help me not to allow these things to become a graven image, to become my gods. Help me not to take a little wood to warm my home, a little warm wood to bake my bread, and set the rest up to worship because there is no God but you. Help me, Lord, to remember that I am a Christian. Help me to remember to not take your name and to drag it through the mud, to hold on to it, Lord, to honor it, and thereby bring glory to you. Lord, help me to keep the days in order. Lord, not just simply to remember a Sabbath, but to make Sabbath a practice in my life, to rest in you, to trust in you, to rely on you, to cling to you, to honor you. Lord, not only this day, but every day. But Lord, I also pray too for my brothers and my sisters that we would come to the place where we would not see it simply as a rest day from work, but a day whenever we can rest in our spirit and be strengthened. Lord, help us to honor those who are our mothers and fathers in Christ. Well, Lord, help us to honor you. Lord, help us not to, to hold bitterness in our hearts, Lord, that bitterness that would result in anger, that would result in murder if we could. Lord, that we would hate in such a strong way. Lord, deliver us from that. Help us not to look at another person, Lord, and to place them above you. Lord, if we are looking at that individual and thinking we're going to find satisfaction in that individual above you, Lord, we've not only committed adultery in the flesh, we've committed it in the spirit. And so, Lord, I pray right now that you would deliver us from that kind of a heart, from that kind of a mind. Help us, Lord, to be in such a way that we would not want to steal, Lord. Uh, in, in your word, it says, neither give, give us riches where we forget who you are, nor bring us to poverty where we steal and disgrace you. Lord, help us not to be that person. And also help us not to steal your glory. Help us, if someone sees good in us, Lord, let us set that at your feet, not to steal your glory. Lord, help us to honor you by speaking truth in a truthful way, in, in such a way that it would not only honor you, but that it would honor those for whom you have died. Help us not to be those who would bear false witness. Help us to understand what false witness is. And finally, Lord, I pray that you'd help us not to covet. And Lord, we do believe that you are God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. Almighty God, we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe that he is your only son, our Lord Jesus. That we believe, Lord, that he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Some would call it immaculate conception. Lord, we call it what it is, an outright miracle that testifies of your glory. Lord, we believe that you were born of a virgin. Lord, that we we believe that you lived a sinless life, that you suffered under Pontius Pilate uh, as he condemned you, and you were crucified, and you died, and you were buried. We know, Lord, that according to your word, you went down and preached to the captives, Lord, and set them free. We know, Lord, that you rose again on the third day, and we're so very thankful for that, Lord. For if you had not risen, Lord, we would be beyond hope. Lord, we know that you ascended into heaven. We know that you are at the right hand of God the Father. You are there, Lord, making intercession for us, and we're thankful for that. We know, Lord, that you will come again, and you will judge both the living and the dead. Lord, we believe in the Holy Spirit. We invite the Holy Spirit into our lives right now in prayer. Lord, we believe in your holy church, those who have called out to believe throughout the world, throughout time and eternity, that you are who you say you are, that there is God in heaven, there is his Son, Christ Jesus, 
and that there is the gift of the Holy Spirit to the believer. We believe in the communion of the saints, Lord, that we would have that which we celebrate in you regularly, the hope that we have through Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the forgiveness of sins. We thank you, Lord, for the resurrection and the resurrection of the body. And Lord, we thank you for life everlasting. And so we pray these things in your sweet name. Help us, Lord, to make these a pattern for prayer in our life. Never to pray them rhetorically, Lord, but to learn what it is to pray them relationally. Lord, we love you and we thank you and we praise you in the sweet name of Jesus. Amen. There's some other quotes that I want to share with you this morning as we get ready to close this, and we will pray and close again. Saints, what can I say? Time is so short, and how can we relate so that people understand the gravity of what it is to be people of prayer? To not simply rush through prayer. So many times we have to, we begin to pray, and then we pray here and we pray there, and our, our mind is all over the place, and then we tidy it up at the end and say amen. I believe that when we work through things like this, it keeps us focused and our prayer becomes true. And I encourage you, saints, be those who would pray through the word. Ian Bound again writes, I feel it is far better to begin with God, to see his face first, and to get my soul near him before it is near another. In 2 Chronicles, it says, Hear the supplications of your servant and your people Israel when they pray towards this place. This was when Solomon was dedicating the temple. And this is the second time it's recorded in the word. But he says, Lord, when these people humble themselves, when they turn their face towards you, hear from heaven your dwelling place. And when you hear, Lord, forgive. Second Chronicles 6.21. In Philippians it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, set your request before the Lord. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You know, saints, why do we worry? Why is it that we get so caught up in wringing our hands when the Lord of the universe, God Almighty, is our Father? And he has us in his hands. And he says, nothing can snatch you away from the Lord. Leonard Ravenhill, who is a mighty man of God now in the presence of the Lord, says, no man is greater than his prayer life. No man is greater than his prayer life. No man is greater than his prayer life. What more can we say? Nothing tends more to submit hearts of Christians together than to pray. Never do they love one another so well as when they witness the outpouring of each other's hearts in prayer. That was Charles Finney. Hudson Taylor says it is impossible to move men through God by prayer alone. I'm sorry, it is possible to move men through God by prayer alone. You want to change somebody? Begin to pray for him. Charles Stanley says, An unschooled man who knows how to meditate upon the Lord has learned far more than the man with the highest education who does not know how to meditate or how to pray. Billy Graham says, To get nations back on their feet, we must first get them on their knees. I believe that that's from the Lord. Saints, there's so much more that could be said. Let me share this last thing, and then we're going to close with prayer. Remember what I said a moment ago, how our, our, our minds can wander, how our hearts wander in the study of the Word and in prayer. This says, if the heart wanders or is distracted, bring it back to the point gently and replace it tenderly in its master's presence. And even if you did nothing during the whole of your hour, but to bring your heart back to the place again and again in our Lord's presence, then through it, 
went away every time and brought it back, your prayer or your hour will be very well employed. St. Francis de Sales. So we've spent some time together this morning. And I hope that this is a blessing to you. I pray that it will be a tool for you. If this is something that you've grabbed, download it, record it, go back and go back over it. Get your Bibles out. Look up Matthew chapter 6. Go back to Exodus chapter 20. Find the Apostles' Creed and pray through it. And saints, I honestly believe with all my heart that if the church will practice these things, the anemia that we suffer spiritually today will be refreshed and revival will come. So let's pray again, and I pray the Lord bless you. Lord, thank you again for this time with your saints. I pray this was a rich blessing as we walk through your word together, as we looked at the practices of the saints in the past, and as we see that we need to be those who truly employ you as our Savior and our only hope. And Lord, let us, by your grace, enter into your presence through prayer and strengthen us that we might be able to stand for your glory in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Lord, heal us of our spiritual wounds. Heal us in our physical bodies. But more than anything, Lord, draw us close to you and let us hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Lord, give us time to pray. We ask this in Jesus' name.